What up YouTube Massive man, I hope everyone is well and of course literally doing well It's been a very very long time since I created any form of YouTube content I've just been, I've been sick um, Well I was literally just sick for about two and a half weeks or longer So I took a break off social and I pretty much just took a break And I'm just starting to create content back on YouTube So what I did was basically is I did reviews of Wonder and Vision on Instagram, IGTV um, so I was going to put them on separate videos for you lot to watch but I thought you know what let me just put them literally onto one um, one big gigantic video so initially these are going to be my spoiler reviews of Wonder and Vision episode 1, 2, 3 and of course literally of course um, 4 Hope everyone enjoys, likes, and yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on Wanda and Vision. With that being said, check it out, and of course, we're going to go from episode one, two, three, all the way down to episode four. Check it out, and peace. What up, beautiful people? You know what time it is. Wanda and Vision drop today. Episode one, episode two is available for you to watch on Disney+. Plus. Episode three drops on the 22nd of this month i don't know if episode four also is dropping of episode three um but it's, like i said episode three is out literally on the 22nd of this month now before we go before we go into the the depths of, of the show of this review of the show which is wonder and vision which is a which is a very sick show this will be a spoiler video if you have not seen the show please 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 do not watch this video any further Go watch Wonder and Vision episodes 1 and 2, then come back and watch my beautiful North African Gemini Marvel Wonder Vision Disney Plus reviewing this epic show base. Get me. Um, before we move forward into basically this show, my show, kind of cool, right? My show, your show. Technically, it's actually my show. It's like a, that's another conversation. We're going to go into Wonder and Vision mode. One, two, three, pow. Exactly. We are in the Wonder and Vision show. So, um, the first thing I want to say is shout out to Paul Bettany who plays the Vision. Shout out to um, Elizabeth Olsen who plays, of course, Scarlet Witch. They totally smashed it in the show. And the reason I really loved the performance was because the show is very comedic. It's like I Dream of Genie meets Happy Days, which are very old school, literally um, TV shows, which are very comedic in nature. And to see them playing that type of role is completely different within, of course, um, the comic book scene. Um, this show, in my opinion, was a gamble, just like Marvel gambled on Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, they gambled literally on Doctor Strange. Um, they gambled literally on Jessica Jones. Um, it was a big gamble and this gamble has really paid off because it's such a smashing, amazing, dope show. But to see them actually acting in this type of comedic role just makes me want to see Elizabeth Olsen and literally Paul Bettany do more of these type of roles. It was so comedic, so dope and it was just, it was fun. It, it reminded me back in the day when I first watched Happy Days, when I first watched um, I Dream of Genie when I first watched like Only Fools and Horses, like really, really comedy, really just back in the day retro comedy. And one thing that I never knew was that the Wonder and Vision show was actually filmed in front of a live audience. I never knew. I thought the, um, I thought literally um, the, the laughter from the audience was actually animated. I never knew there were actually real people until I actually saw, of course, um, what do you call it? Um, I saw footage of uh, of the stage i was like wow this is actually really 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 cool so that's one thing i basically want to um, get off my north african marvel gemini chest you get me um i want to ask this question because this question will blow your mind um in regards to everyone having so much fan theories about what the show is actually about and so forth do you think there will be a season two do you because we all know the vision is dead well, is he isn't he dead so if they actually was to do a season two and the vision ain't there will they actually call it wonder and vision or just wonder like the show's insane it's twisted i mean it's so nuts and crazy you don't know where you are when you watch the show so i'm like will there be a season two 
in regards to the synopsis and what you beautiful people have seen that Wonder and Vision is actually about so far. Do you see a possibility of there being a season two or is it just a one hit wonder? No sequel and it leads to of course Doctor Strange in the multiverse of course of madness where potentially this movie could be actually taking place right now in the multiverse of madness. Can you imagine like the end scene is like Wanda wakes up and Doctor Strange is there and he goes we have to go to work and you're like oh my gosh. Anyway just throwing it out there but that's my question to you beautiful people. My thoughts on you know will there be a season two of literally of um, Wanda and Vision. So um, I'm going to talk about um, talk about literally, uh, yeah, the show. It was unsettling. It was it was unsettling. It was creepy. Um, it was very intense. It was comedic, and the way they introduced the horror into the in, into the scenes was totally amazing. It felt like he was watching old school horror movies, which I really love. Um, the new these horror movies they put out now it says gore and blood and guts, like you know blood shooting out and stuff. The element of the element of horror has been sucked out in my personal opinion um but the horror scenes really triggered me and I was like oh my gosh this is very it made me feel uncomfortable like I'll give you an example the scene of where the vision and his wife are having dinner with his the boss his boss and his wife right and the boss starts to choke and then his wife is like ah oh, stop playing stop playing and she starts repeating it over and over again Wanda looks at looks at him she looks at Vision, Vision looks at her and he looks at him and it's like no one does anything, it's a standstill and what that, what that reminded me of is when you have nightmares and dreams, you know when you have those particular dreams where you can't move, you can't speak, you can't budge, you can't do anything but literally just suck it all up until you wake up and you're like, huh? you're like, well, you're like wow what, that was a freaky nightmare and that potentially is the type of eerie vibe that I got from literally watching the show. Funny enough, um, Wonder Vision also reminds me of, it's an old TV show. I'm going to link it up here. I'll show you the image here. Eerie Indiana. If you can watch, if somehow you can watch this show, please watch it. It's really freaky and just really insane. It's really retro and old school, but it's a very eerie show that I recommend everyone to to watch it's a must you you get the feel of how wonder vision kind of connects to it to a degree um but that's how i felt when i was watching it. i was like this is very creepy and then she was like vision help him and it was as if it was as if basically if the if she never uttered those words the vision would have let him just die which is quite insane um the easter eggs let's go into the easter eggs so we have the stark toaster now when you see the Stark toaster, you see the the blip, the uh, the blip blip. It goes blip, 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 and then the toast comes out. That's symbolic, of course, of Tony Stark. Tony Stark's weapons of mass destruction, pretty much the weapons that he was making that killed um, the family of Wanda, uh, which is why Wanda, you know, so forth, joined literally, of course, Hydra. So that's one um, Easter egg, literally, in regards to why that Easter egg was actually, of course, there. Secondly, that Easter egg could all be also be symbolic of, you know, in, in Avengers: Age of Ultron, you have um, Tony Stark, right, and he's de-aged, and then, I can't remember, but he used that particular soft that particular um, software that Mysterio used, and of course in Spider-Man: Far Away from Home. So possibly, could someone be using that particular program to keep to keep Wonder literally, of course. Um, to keep Wanda literally un under control or keep her just not knowing what she's about and what's really popping off. So th there's two scenarios of what that particular Easter egg could, could actually be um, literally of course be uh, symbolic of which is quite interesting. When I saw that I was like uh oh, interesting interesting interesting. Um, the second Easter egg that we saw was the the Strucker Swiss watch. Of course, Strucker is the guy that experimented on Wanda and gave them, of course, their powers. And of course, we see this happening in Avengers Age of Ultron um, once again. Um, what's also interesting about basically that particular um, that particular uh, that particular Easter egg is when you think of it realistically, that's already happened in the past. And so has basically 
uh, the toaster scenario in regards to how I, how I broke down Tony um, Stark in regards to, of course, um, you know, those weapons, of course, being the ones that killed um, Wanda's family and so forth. So it's quite interesting. It feels like those particular commercials could be triggers for her to remember who she really is because they're past memory. So we're dealing with mind control, we're dealing with consciousness, we're dealing with the flow of energy. We're also dealing with time being bent, being time being, sp being speeded up and reversed as we saw basically in the show. So in, in a nutshell, when I saw that, I was like, wow, Strucker's dead. Because obviously he got killed off. And so it feels like it's playing from, it's going from the past to the future. Um, those Easter eggs were literally, of course, insane and nuts. Um, the second thing that we saw was the helicopter, which is quite interesting. Um, the helicopter was the only thing that was basically in colour. And then we literally had, of course, uh, the blood, which was basically uh, when um, Wanda went to that party to meet that woman. I believe her name was Dot. And they, the radio uh, the radio blew up and then she smashed the glass and that her hand was cut in blood, which is quite interesting. But the helicopter, um, and I was researching it, looking it up. It, if you look at the helicopter, it actually has, of course, um, the the top bit where the spinning thing, I don't know what it's called, which helicopter uses to fly up, that thing where, at, at the edges of it, there's swords, right? So people were saying that's sword. Now sword is the... It's, it's sword deal with alien threats, which is essentially, we can say that, apparently we can say that at the end of um, Spider-Man uh, Far From Home, we saw the, the post credit scene with Nick Fury out, out in outer space. So in regards, sword is, they deal with higher threats in outer space um, and shield deal with the, the threats that are literally from Earth. So potentially, that can be symbolic of sword um the helicopter is also it has the color literally of what the, it's 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 red and yellow like gold and yellow which is kind of symbolic also of of course of tony stark's armor and of course the iron spider armor which is quite interesting in my opinion um what was interesting um also was uh I forgot what i was gonna say uh yeah when you look at the sword when you look at this dude right here and this dude like this dude right here basically he was of course um at the end of episode two and when he turns back you can see that particular logo right and then when you look at this logo um it's actually the sword logo so is he part of sword or well, what's going on the thing that's really bugging everyone is how is wanda pregnant how and why and how it's a very creepy, it's a very, it's a very weird show. And I think Kevin Feige, the figgy, the fixer, he did say it. So it's just, a, it's a different show. And it really is a different show. Um, <laughs> there isn't even a synopsis to what the show is, is literally really about. But you can see and feel that the show is building up to something big. And I look forward to seeing what that is going to be. So yeah, what, what it's going to be. It's going to be very interesting to find out what this show is really about. But overall, I totally loved it. I, I know. I, I loved it. It's got enough 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Tomatoes, as we say in the UK. And um, I really enjoyed the show. I think it's literally one of the best Marvel shows that I've seen so far. Because it's completely different to what I'm used to watching. And it reminded me of, like I said, back in the day. When I was young, I used to watch all these old school... Um, TV shows, you know, reruns and so forth. And I was like, this is kind of cool. It's really, really nice. And it was a it's a light show, one of the envision, but then when 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 the when when the horror kicks in, it's really insane. It's really has so much depth to it. Um one thing that I realized though from the first episode is when you watch it, um, they're basically um they can't remember anything. So it feels like Wanda's, Wanda's memories have been wiped, wiped clean. Now you can say the you can say the Vision can't remember anything because he's actually dead, so we can give him a pass. But Wanda isn't dead, 
So someone's messing with her, someone's mind controlling her, wiping her memories away. I think every time she tries to remember, she, she can't remember. There's a block there. But what's quite interesting, it's like she's the one that's in control of this movie, of this show of her life. Because at the end of episode two, when the man comes out of the drains and she looks at him and he's like, and she's like, oh no, no. And then she rewinds, she rewinds time in reality and it plays out basically the way that, the way that she wants it to play out, which is quite interesting. So it feels like Wanda's mind is the key to solving this mystery. Like it's quite interesting to see how, it, how, 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 how that plays out. Like for, for the whole show, they can't remember who they are, what they are, what they're doing and how they got there. And so for me, there's a, there's a high level of mind control. It's really dealing with the, with the, with the conscious and subconscious. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very intense show when you think of it. You're like, wow, she can't remember. She tries to remember. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. So one thing, one thing that's really cool about this show is everyone is guessing to what the show is about. Because at the end of episode one, the TV zooms out and then you see a guy with a notepad and he closes the notepad and you see all this high-tech equipment. So what's happening? Are they being monitored? Or is that just to throw, is, or is that just to throw everybody off? Quite interesting, right? Uh, are they in a Hydra base? Are they in a shield base? Is, um, is Wanda in a coma and she doesn't, and she can't get out? Or has she, has she been captured? And now, basically, she's going for a scenario. Or maybe the fact that she isn't in harm, it could be the fact that she possibly took Vision's death so hard that she just went into a coma. She can't wake up until she puts the puzzles together and wakes up. Uh, what's quite interesting also is the voice that we kept hearing throughout the whole show. Meaning, of course, um, the voice that was saying... Uh, wonder who's doing this to you and I was like is that Tony Stark is that Doctor Strange who is that person that's saying that to her is that her subconscious trying to wake her up who knows so it's, it's, it, you just, like you're just asking it's just you're asking loads of questions loads of questions are getting asked and it's a very very interesting uh it's a very interesting show I can't wait there's loads of Easter eggs. The, uh, the comedy was fun. That scene when they uh, were, were showing, the scene where they were doing the magic and so forth, uh, the magic show, I think that was very, very humorous, very, very fun. And it's it's insane. It's an insane show. And it feels like the, the, the supporting characters know who she is, but she doesn't. Like when she goes to that woman, uh, to all, when she goes to that woman, uh, is it dark? Is it dark? I can't remember. Uh, to audition and so forth and she says I know we I know about you and your husband and you're like oh what do you know but is that a reflection of Wanda's subconscious actually speaking to her and saying Wanda you have to get up I know this isn't real and what's quite interesting is is she has her powers he has his powers but they don't know who they are, and there's never a moment in the show where they're like, "How how, how do we use? How is it we're using our powers?" It's like they, it's like pretty much the identity has been stripped away, but everything else is put into place, which is really really insane. It's really insane when you think about it, and um, I really feel also potentially um, the black woman that's been introduced into the show that's Wanda's friend. She could be an agent to try and help Wanda to wake up, but she doesn't want to do anything too early that might damage her or cause her to just flip out. So she could be monitoring her in that particular state. Who knows? So many theories. I can be here for hours and days and months and years breaking theories and then saying what the show is about. I can't wait for episode three to see what the show builds up to. Um, I love the fact this show is tied into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So my, my other theory was the fact that Wonder and Vision is that Wonder and Vision potentially could be set in the multiverse. It could be where actually Wonder is, is alive. The Vision 
is alive. Or maybe Wanda teleports into the multiverse and she takes place, she time travels into that particular era where, where the vision is alive. But the key is she actually loses her memory, so she doesn't, she doesn't know who she is or what she is. But she knows that she's in love with the vision and vice versa. Hey man, I'm just throwing it out there, man. You're dealing, you're dealing with Wonder and Vision. You're dealing with magic. You're dealing with the occult. You're dealing with Doctor Strange because the show does tie into um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I was actually thinking, was there going to be a Doctor Strange Easter egg or is he going to be in the show? Um, he actually might be in the last episode. Who knows? That's my thoughts on the show. Um, it's really in. It's really in. It's a really insane show. So. I think also the commercials give you a big hint um, into, it, into what the show is really about. Uh, so maybe if we see something in the next episode in regards to a, a commercial that's set in maybe in the present or the future or just like hints of it, we can see we might be moving forward. Because right now, like I said, those two commercials are set in the past, in the real past. So, and if, and if she's mentioning, it's quite, it's quite interesting. If they're mentioning Stark and Hydra, that means Stark and Hydra in that particular reality, they actually exist. And regarding Strucker, it could be a different Strucker, like great great granddad Strucker, who knows? And it could be great 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 Stark, who knows? It could be Howard Stark's dad, Howard Stark's parents, like, you know, his dad. You just don't know. It's quite interesting to see how it can get twisted up, man. But overall, it's a very twisted, unsettling show. Everyone needs to watch it. Um, I felt like, wow. I felt like, wow, wow, wow. And I was like, oh my gosh. This is insane. It's an insane show. And I'm, and I could watch this show over and over again. I can't wait. Um, I hope, I really hope there's a season two. Um... I don't know how they would manage it, but I don't. I don't think. I no. I know they would do a season two, but then again, this show could be just a prequel to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We just don't know. That like, literally, Wonder and Vision, those nine episodes, could be the prequel to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We just don't know because it's such a messed up, twisted amazing dope show of so much horror and madness and it's mind bending reality bending time traveling rewinding time horror like a cult it's just insane it's got comedy and it's fun at the same time yo it's a show and a half to watch so so many possibilities so many realities um so many ways the show could actually end and if you've watched this, this video to the end my question to you beautiful people is of course what did you think of Wonder and Vision? What are your fan theories? And how did you feel when you were watching it? Like, what was the emotional, what was the emotional rush? How were you emotionally feeling when you watched the show? Were you like, oh my gosh? And how did you feel when the horror scenes came about? Were you like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. It's really, very, this is crazy. Or well, I really love this. Like, how did you feel? Love to know your thoughts, comments, and everything else. Um, as always, click, like, follow, subscribe, share with your friends. Drop your comments down below. Let me know your let me know your amazing thoughts on wonder and vision. Focus on my beautiful face. What up, man? We are literally back. So, just oh, before we move forward, this is going to be a spoiler of Wonder and Vision episode three. So, if you have not watched the episode, um, please don't watch this video because. I will be spoiling it. Just, just warning you in it. So, um, with that being said, what's up, people? Hope everyone is well, and of course, literally doing well. Um, watched One Done Vision today, episode three. Um, it was really, really cool. It, you know, the storyline is progressing forward. We're starting to really understand what the show is kind of about, which I think is good considering the last two episodes uh we were like what's the show about now we actually have a little teaser of what the show is possibly about 
it opens up more storytelling for the fourth episode or does it because we still don't really know what we actually saw and how we saw it and what it truly means and so many questions so many scenarios so many episodes um regarding episodes in my mind trying to figure out basically like what the show is really um truly about um for me like i said it is one of the best marvel tv shows they've actually pumped out because it's completely different it's twisted it's creepy it has horror it's it's subtle it's comedic you know it's shot in front of a live audience it's a combination of like 60s 70s sitcoms compressed together with the marvel marvel studios twist and i really love that because i've never seen that before done within marvel within superhero movies or tv shows so um, i'm really excited to see what the show actually holds for us and will there be of course will there be a season two i really hope there will be so um quite interesting in today's episode because in today's episode because we actually find out that wonder actually of course has given birth and um to two beautiful uh literally twins which is totally amazing and totally cool and of course the question is how did she get pregnant so quick um it's like where she is time flies literally very very quick which is very very strange um and i'm trying to figure out like how and why but every time i try to think of how and why i just can't because the shows are nuts and crazy just like obviously me get me um what's up the um, the best part of today's episode was literally of course the moment that every marvel fan and every single person who has been engrossed into 11 years of marvel studios uh, movie history is when she uttered those words to Geraldine what did you say and Geraldine basically says he was killed he was killed by Ultron and everyone everyone was like oh, no the flashbacks of you know him you know Pedro actually or oh, did I pronounce that right Quicksilver you know actually getting killed in Avengers um, Age of Ultron and I was like huh? and that kind of opened up the question like she remembered that she had a brother but then it came to her, like when Geraldine said it, uh, he was killed by Ultron, she had, to, she had to think for a few seconds. And then she was like, what did you say? And then she realized her brother was, was killed by Ultron. Now, but I was like, hold on a second. If you already know that Ultron was killed, I mean... Quicksilver, your brother was killed by Ultron. Then why are you bugging out on Geraldine in regards to her saying that to you? Now, obviously, she's probably bugging out because she's thinking, um, "Who is she? Like, how did she know?" But then it was like when Wanda reacted to what Geraldine said, she was also confused in regards to like, how did she know? So it was quite an interesting moment. Everyone was thinking, "Oh, she, Wanda went nuts because." Geraldine said literally you know he was killed by Ultron people were like how did Geraldine know but then the question is why did Wanda act in that particular state of mind like she just she was like and then she was emotional and she was like all just zoned out and then she was like how, how did you know and then Geraldine made it out to be like she didn't know what she was talking about which was quite interesting. And what was quite interesting was in that particular moment, um, Wanda never actually rewind, rewind the time or reality or the people that are controlling the situation didn't rewind time in reality, uh, time and reality. Like at the beginning of the episode, we see Wanda and Vision talking and I think Vision says there's something kind of wrong and then it just rewinds basically. And then he pretty much says what she would want him to say or what the person who's controlling the scenario actually wants her to say just like at the end of episode two um when we, when we see that guy with the sword 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 um logo at the back and then wonders like vision's like wonder vision like who is this guy and then it rewinds so it was quite interesting that 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 never actually happened in that particular moment so does that mean that wonder is getting her getting her um getting her mind back getting her thoughts back getting her memories back and that's how she wants it to be or is she the one that's actually controlling this reality 
it's just insane, right? It's just really, really insane. Is she controlling this reality? Is she, does she actually know where she is? It's quite interesting because it feels like she knows, she kind of knows what she's doing if she actually is manipulating the situation and the fact that she's she's in a dream state or in in a, in a, in in a state of where she basically she knows something's up and she knows that she's not supposed to be here but she basically wanted to see how her life would be like with a vision and what's kind of interesting is the other characters basically that we saw was speaking to a vision about Geraldine and um, what was quite interesting was it's like they understood they said to her they said to him she wasn't basically she's not from here and the way they were talking it was as if to say they knew why they were here in this town and they knew about the vision and they knew about wonder but the vision and wonder don't know or the vision doesn't literally know so it was quite interesting either these characters that are are engaging with wonder and vision are actually part of some part of literally um the matrix a sort of matrix or they're possibly um what is it called in marvel's age of shield they had it they had that they had the arc of um was it the mainframe the mainframe it's when they got plugged into um yeah, i think it was i can't remember what it's called is it the mainframe well, where Hydra was literally like ruling the world. The mainframe, I can't remember. It kind of reminds me literally of, of, of that, of that, of that particular, of course, um, scenario. So is Wanda the one that's actually pulling the strings? Is she pulling the strings? Quite interesting. If she's actually the one that's pulling the strings and she knows what's popping off, because it seems like every time Vision says to wonder there's something like there's something wrong or whatever time just rewinds reality rewinds so is she rewinding reality or is the people that are controlling the situation rewinding the reality so that was a very cool moment within um wonder and vision and i was like oh my gosh i was like <gasps> and she said when she said ultra and i was like oh my gosh so what's going on now like like what's going on or has or has geraldine infiltrated infiltrated uh i don't know this reality that wanda and vision have been put in and is she slowly trying to help her to put the puzzles together so she can wake up fully and realize something's happening to her and she can wake up because it possibly it might be a thing of where that's what, that's what i'm thinking that geraldine is slowly giving her the information to wake her up and if she gives her too much of who she who Wanda really is, she might just, she might not be, she might not be able to take it and she could literally die. She could die in this particular matrix that she's in and then she can die in the real world. That's possibly the, the, the situation. Now, what's, what's nuts and crazy is we saw, um, in the last episode, we saw Wanda holding the helicopter, right? And then at the end of this episode, we see Geraldine just getting, I don't know where happened to her, but she got thrown basically into the real world. And um, what was quite interesting is we saw helicopters and so forth. So does that mean when the helicopters actually go through uh, to wherever Wanda and Vision are, they actually manifest into these toy helicopters and so forth? Who knows? That could be a particular a particular uh, reason of why that helicopter manifested into that particular toy. And what's really strange is the colours were gold and yellow. And of course, gold, gold and yellow is symbolic, of course, um, the Tony Stark armor, um, the actually the old school um, Iron Spider suit, which we see in the comics. So could there be a, could there be a, could there be a potential that in that particular Easter egg that we saw with the helicopter that um, they're using Stark's technology that I said previously was used in, of course, in Avengers Age of um, Ultra when we saw like Stark de-aged and so forth. Could that potentially be used to keep Wanda on lockdown? It's quite interesting. And like Geraldine had, she did have the, the sword chain, but then why would she have the sword chain on her? The sword chain. If she's trying to keep her low, trying to keep low, then why would she have that particular logo on like on her chain? Why? Is it to ignite Wanda? Is it to help her? I don't know, but it's 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 starting to make sense. And of course, at the end of the episode, we actually saw what 
Okay, so all of these like projectors projecting onto the side of like um, um, of where the Wonder Vision, I guess, sitcom is actually kicking off. So that goes to, that now that now sh that now tells you. It basically tells you that this may not be actually a um, a dream or a reality. It's actually taking place in the real world. Potentially, Wanda has been kidnapped. The vision's brought, the vision's been brought back to life somehow, somewhere, and they're actually now they actually have been put into this place, into the sitcom, um, and potentially. It is what it is. I don't know why. They, I don't know. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there because we saw those projectors, right? So I was thinking, hold on a second. If this were, if this was actually, if they were, if they were asleep, if they were unconscious, um, then why would there be a need for these projectors? Because it would be a whole mental mind control element thing, just like we saw in Marvel's Age of Shield. You know, Coulson going through the Project Tahiti and so forth. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a mad one. Are they dreaming? Are they mind controlled? Are they unconscious? Are they subconsciously um, using wonder and vision to get information out of them, or are they actually alive? And of course, uh, in, and they've put them in this, in this particular situation where they're in this like this sitcom, which kind of makes sense because the doctor did say the car. Didn't, they couldn't go. They couldn't go on their drive. Uh, um, they couldn't go on their um, drive because you know everything. He said something of uh, where there's no escape, which means possibly are these characters that have been put into Wonder and Vision that we've actually seen have they actually also been captured and put in there somehow being blackmailed or told if they don't if they don't act a certain way or follow the script that they're gonna die. Or their families are gonna die. I don't know. It's just get, it's it's twisted. Like it's it's a very twisted episode. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's quite interesting. So just when you think you figured it out, you haven't. But we did actually see the helicopters. We did see like when Geraldine was thrown. A, she came out a particular portal, and it was like a reddish portal, which is symbolic, of course, literally of of wonder. So who knows? What happened in that particular moment where, be, where be, before they cut the scene, Geraldine could have told Geraldine could have told her the scenario, and Wanda could have sent her home or just told her like, just go. Like it's quite interesting because we never saw what happened within that cut scene when when the scene got cut. So it was very very interesting to see, and we also seen more Hydra commercials, which is very interesting. So what's really happening? Why Hydra? And of course we know Hydra was involved with Wanda. Uh, and of course, uh, her brother, you know, so we understand that. But why is it consistently Hydra? So there's a lot to, there's a lot to actually take uh, into, 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 into mind. But I was watching it, I was, I had to rewind that scene a few times when, um, you know, she mentions, um, Wanda mentions her brother. And of course, uh, Geraldine mentions Ultron. Uh, so it's quite interesting. And what's, what's interesting is... It, it went into colour. This episode is in colour. So we're moving forward into time, I guess, to a degree. And then if you realise, um, after that, the um, the um, the width of the screen started to expand to normal. Then it went into cinematic mode and then we saw Geraldine. So I was like, ah, oh, so this is the real world. And it was kind of interesting because it was like we went from a TV the old school TV experience when we when the screen was like this, and then it went to normal TV, and then it went straight into a cinematic um, um, scene, which is cool, which is symbolic of potentially a movie. Is is that the intro to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? Who knows? Because you know they are connected. Spider Man and Wonder Spider Man Three and Wonder and Vision are connected to. Um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So I'm like, hmm, it's quite, a, it's kind of interesting. So I'm trying to just like play it back in my mind and just picking up, picking up the the details. Um, so yeah, that's that that moment that was literally was amazing. I was like, ah, oh, so much information. But then we still don't know what's going on. Like we don't know what's going on. 
We really don't. Like, where is, like, when Geraldine landed, where was she? Was she on Earth? Was she in the particular multiverse? Like, where was she? Just because they, just because they were, um, they were, I don't know, they were like military with guns and stuff. Could they be aliens? You know, like, could it be, I don't know, could it be set in the, on a different planet? Like, we just don't know. We just literally don't know what the show is about or what's going on. So even though we've got that little snippet of potentially uh, of what we saw at the, at, the, at the end with Geraldine and so forth, no one really knows. And everyone's had the speculations. Is it her? Is it, is it, her, is it Wanda's um, reality of how life would have been? Pardon me if the vision was alive. Or I've had, have they been captured? Or is it part of an ex, a subconscious experiment? And is the vision actually alive? That's the actual question. Is he actually alive or is he actually dead? Now, those projectors were there. Those projectors were there. And it was funny because when we actually saw a tra the trailer of Wonder and Vision, when Geraldine tries to uh, put her hand, uh, she she walks right to the, to, to the, uh, at the end of the city or, or the town. She tries to put her hand through and she can't go through because there's like a there's like a a border there's like a, a force field so if it has been if if they have been captured and they are in this particular town and we could actually see because it was greenland um that potentially could mean that the vision is that the vision is somehow alive and kicking because he's a robot he can easily be brought back to life you know we all know Anything could have happened in Wakanda when Shuri scanned him. She could have scanned the energy of the stone that was embedded in his, in his, um, in his forehead and somehow used that energy to bring him back to life. We just don't know. You know, he can be brought back to life because he's, he's a robot to a degree. So, and um, yeah, so you just don't know. So if he's alive, uh, that would be cool to get the vision back because, yeah, be cool. But like I said, that's what I that's what I picked up from the show. I look forward to seeing episode four. Um, I really hope that there is going to be a season two because after this season, I think everyone's going to be like, you know what, you got to give us a season two. Um, but there might not be a season two. This this movie this I was going to say movie. What I meant to say was this this series could potentially be the introduction prequel to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We just don't know because it is connected. So we just don't know. It's quite interesting that this movie is connected to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So is Spider-Man. And Spider-Man is, is going to have Doctor Strange. So it feels like Doctor Strange is kind of like the new Tony Stark within the MCU to a degree. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, that's literally all I have to say. That's all I can remember. Uh, overall, it was it was it was a dope show. I just I just love I love the comedy aspect. I um, I love Paul Bettany. I think he's humorous when he's comedic like this. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen, super comedic too. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed the show. Thirty three minutes, thirty three minutes. The show. What I don't understand is is why are the credits so long? In Wonder Vision, why? Why are they so long? Because I watched it throughout and I thought, well, is there an Easter egg? Is there a post credit scene? Like, because I, is there? Isn't there? Why is it so long? So, that's something that's really creepy. You're like, hmm, why? Because if you was to think, if you was to, if you was to remove the, the post, if you was to remove the, the long credits and the intro, it's not actually 30 minutes. It's actually like a 20 minute show to a degree. And that, 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 I think, gets people kind of like, ugh, because the show's so nuts and they're smart in actually keeping it short because it makes you basically want to watch the next episode. It's like watching Dragon Ball Z back in the day. It was like 20, 25 minutes, 22 minutes per episode. So they're smart. Marvel are very, very smart in how they've um, documented, story told, branded, and gained the attention of every single person in regards to watching this show. 11 years of storytelling, and now we literally have this show, which pretty much kicks off from, well, obviously Avengers um, Avengers Endgame, but it connects now with, with Avengers Age of Ultron. 
very strange very dope very nice anyways peeps what did you think of today's episode of um <clears throat> wonder and vision i'd love to know your thoughts um drop your comments down below i'm actually going to add this to like i'm going to have a playlist um uh, on instagram wonder and vision because i think i might as well because i'm going to do reviews of it every single day or every single week when the show comes out so yeah i have a playlist of wonder and vision so i'm gonna have episode one and two which is done already uh that was like my first video which was last week and yeah hope everyone is well and doing well i guess question of your question of the day what did you think of wonder vision episode three and my other question is what do you what did you what did you think and what do you think the meaning was when Geraldine told um, Wanda that he was killed by Ultron? Why did she utter those words to her? Why? She knew. But how did she know? How did she know? How did she know he was killed by, by he was killed? How and why? And then one thing before we go, she had to think. One thing I forgot to say, she had to think. And then she was thinking, she was like, he was killed by Ultron. So even, even she, and I'm just going back to him, I'm going, I'm contra contradicting myself, but I don't care. Because uh, I, I thought of this just now. She had to think, she, Geraldine had to think for a few minutes before basically she said he was killed by Ultron. So how did she know? Didn't she know? How did she get the insight? Is she also trapped in there? Because they did say those guys uh, that were talk that was those two that was conversating. The vision was coming over, basically. Um, like she, she's not from here. She has no husband. Blah blah blah. Like she's not from here. So did she infiltrate to help Wanda somehow? And she, she was wearing the sword chain just so just so she can actually fit in. And how did they know that she wasn't actually part? How did they actually know that? That Geraldine wasn't from here, like so. That means they must be, they must be part of the Matrix to keep Wanda locked up, so she doesn't figure out who she is. Thank you. Anyways, I'm probably right. I'm probably wrong, but I had to throw that out there. What up, people? We are back. Hope everyone is well and, of course, literally doing well. Just to let you know, this will be a spoiler review of the latest episode i believe episode four of wanda and vision which dropped today i repeat this is going to be a spoiler video if you have not seen the episode or the last um the last episodes from episode one to four please go watch those episodes and then come back here and dig into my beautiful face you get me well that being said let's go into it first of all first of all First of all, it was it was dope. Um, the whole episode was as if I was watching a Marvel movie within within the theaters, within the cinemas. Like the way it was shot, the way it was edited, it it pretty much was it was this episode was a Marvel movie. It was literally a Marvel movie, which is amazing because um, a friend of mine was like when I told him about Wonder and Vision, he said to me, Nah, man, like, I don't want to deal with these budget TV shows. And I was like, no, it won't be budget. Because when, when I was watching Wonder and Vision, it looked like just a basic sitcom, right? So you the way it was, the energy, the tone, it was, it looked old. It looked like a, a budget script, like a budget TV show. And I was like, nah, it won't be. So when this, when, when we, when this episode aired, I was like, this is MCU quality. It's literally, it was as if I was watching scene or scenes from like, you know, from a Marvel movie, and it was so well put together. It was so good. It was light. It was dark. It was exciting. It was comedic. It was as if I was back. We were all back, literally, of course, in the movies, watching, uh, watching a, a Marvel, literally, of course, um, movie, which is really dope and literally really nice. But I love the fact how is how this move, how this episode, it was connected to, of course, Avengers. Um, end game and, and I'm speaking about literally of course the, the the first scene of Wanda and Vision where Rambo she she reappears and literally of course um, in the hospital and um, you know everyone's coming back to life because that's when Tony Stark Tony 
I said Tony Stark. Tony Stark, sorry, snapped everyone back into existence. So it was kind of nuts and crazy to see everybody coming back to life. Patients, um, people screaming, like it was it was chaotic. And that was a very like emotional scene because no one ever thought like how no one ever depicted or showed us, I guess from the Marvel perspective, and how they actually all came back. You know, was it traumatic? Was it emotional? Was it exciting? And obviously everyone was coming back. It was insane. Um, and that was cool. And of course, it's tied into, of course, to um, Captain Marvel, Rambo's mum, which now I totally have forgotten her name, which totally, of course, um, literally sucks. Uh, but that scene there was so good and so well put together. I literally loved it. Um, I thought it was so cool. So nice. Uh, what else? Yes. Uh, we saw Darcy um, coming back into the, uh, to, of course, uh, Wonder Vision. Of course, she's the geek from, of course, from Thor. And it was, was so good to see her because I, I love her vibe. I love her energy and I love her character. She's, she's very just sarcastic, but she's just very fun at the same time. And it was cool. It was nice. It was such a well put together, literally, TV show. Um, I mean, it was such a well put together episode really digged it really enjoyed it um of course we finally find out that this isn't the one that isn't being mind controlled she hasn't been literally captured um she's not dreaming she's the one that's in charge and instigating like this whole situation it's pretty much wonder wonder is the one that's actually doing what she's doing in regards to creating this whole scenario but there's more literally of course to the story because as Darcy says she says well it looks like the universe came together and pal created of course literally a sitcom quite interesting and of course the most interesting thing about this particular episode is how did it, how did all of this happen why is it happening is that really wonder over there or is that a reflection or of Wanda and Wanda is somewhere unconscious somewhere and she's projecting herself basically in that particular town like even though it seems to make sense it still doesn't make literally sense because we saw the visions dead right he's literally dead but he's alive in the show so how is he brought back to life why is he why is he how how did he come back to life how we saw that big crack in his head he was dead you know, that, and that was the last time we saw that was literally, of course, in Avengers Infinity War when Thanos just ripped the Infinity Stone out of his head and he just passed away and he just died. So it's quite interesting. You know, how is the Vision alive? How is he alive? Why is he there? How, how, how did Wanda create this particular scenario? Um, which is quite interesting because we all now know this, the, the town is actually real. The people are actually real. So what happened? Did Wanda mysteriously just go nuts one day and said, D -d -d -sh, and then she created her own, re her own world within that particular city? Like how? How, 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 how? How did it happen? And why did it happen? And why is Wanda doing this? If that's really Wanda, if that is really Wanda in the show. Um, you know, it's quite interesting. It really, really is interesting to see how how this will play out, and it's the show's get it, it just it just went boom like in today's episode it just went full throttle man it just went straight into MCU mode, like it started off slow and slow and slow and it just it just blew up, so now we know what's popping what's happening, and I think potentially now what's going to happen in the next episode from seeing the teaser which I'm gonna put up my next IGTV video and do. Um, a quick little review of what I think of it. it looks like Wanda and Vision are going to fight each other and also they're going to fight swords, which is quite interesting. Which brings me to the next question, like, um, sword. Is sword the new shield? Because was, in Marvel's Age of S.H.I.E.L.D., the team disappeared. But the essence of S.H.I.E.L.D. was still there because Mac, I believe, became... Um, he's still the, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. So S.H.I.E.L.D. is there. But is basically did 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 is like I don't know is it's still even though Shield is there it, Shield is there in Marvel's Agents of Shield right obviously Marvel's Agents of Shield is its own universe because obviously they they stopped the whole um, 
or connection with the MCU. So does that mean initially in the Marvel 616 universe, the present universe, that shoot that sword is the new shield, or maybe shield is reforming from sword, who knows? But it was quite interesting, which kinda kinda now makes a bit more sense in regards to why Nick Fury is out of space in that space. And of course that was the, the post credit scene um from the from Spider-Man Far Away from Home. So it's pretty interesting to see how shield uh, sorry shield how sword actually is working. It literally feels like it's just it's just the uh, the the, the high, a, a more of a high tech version of um shield to a degree really but it was quite interesting to see it and it was quite interesting to 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 see basically what happened in the last episode where Wanda just removed Geraldine and threw her out of this world of their world and back into the real world and she didn't kill her she just removed her and so it looks like Wanda knows that this is all a facade she's in control of she's in control of this world she's in control of this reality that she's created with this world but the question is again how did it how did it happen you know what happened like for Wanda to do what she's doing or is that really Wanda like no one really knows what's really happening as much as they've given us they've sort of given us the the concreted storyline of what's really happening there's going to be so much more twists and turns in this in these these uh following episodes to really 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 just blow our minds and i really can't wait to see where the show actually of course literally ends but it was really cool it was nice to see in reverse what happened what um, prior to they gave us like an origin story to uh rambo uh, in regards to who she is where she comes from what she's doing how she is what she's up to and how she actually implanted herself of course in um what do you call it in in in, in the town and it's quite interesting so hmm it's quite interesting it's a very um even though even though they've given us they've given us like a concrete version a concreted um storyline you know so many questions so many questions to 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 uh to answer like so if the vision has been brought back to life right he's been brought back to life right does that mean, does that now mean that if he leaves the city, that he will still be alive? Like, d does it mean that? Is the vision alive? Obviously, he's dead. We saw the scene. I was like, whoa, that was creepy, man. Like, we saw it for what it truly is. But if he leaves the town, sorry, will he die? And why a sitcom? Like, why is it a sitcom? Very strange, right? Out of all of the things Marvel could have put it, put it, it's become a sitcom. But why is it a sitcom? Why? And the people basically who are in the city, they're playing characters, right? Pardon me. So do they know they're actually in a sitcom? Because we saw the last episode of where... Uh, the, I can't remember the, the, the characters' names, where they said to Vision, like... Uh, Geraldine, you know, she isn't from here. She hasn't got a husband. She hasn't got blah blah blah, and like they were sort of talking to one another. So, are they playing the part, or why don't they? Why don't they leave? Also, it's quite interesting. It's a very nutty show. Um, it's very nuts. But I'm I'm happy that I think the best thing that came out of the show is we got more of a story of a storyline, which is even though it's solidified, um, it's concrete. Like I say, it's still going to be. It's still going to mess people's brains apart or minds apart in the next episode. Um, but the best thing that came out of this, I think this episode for me was like, we saw the connection with the MCU. And now we've seen, now we've, now we've seen S.W.O.R.D. We might see, we might see S.W.O.R.D. literally within the MCU. We, they might be in the Eternals. Um, they might be in Shang-Chi. Like we just don't know now. So it's quite interesting to see how that particular department of the MCU of course, and sword is now going to be uh, brought forward, and quite simply, we, 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 will we get to see like Agent Coulson coming back? I'd love to see Coulson come back, and um, yeah, it's it's nice. It was a nice episode. It blew me apart uh, when I saw, of course, um, the Vision, that scene where you you see you see that he's dead, 
you're like, I was like, oh, I was like, oh my gosh, so he's dead, he's he he's dead, he's dead. But she's but the realities made it made it out to be, like, he's still alive. But the funny thing is, <clears throat> even though Wanda knows what's 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 going on. I still feel that she doesn't have control over the situation to a degree. I really think there's something else that's working through her possibly or that's manipulating the situation, like a higher purpose or a higher being, who knows. Um, this whole episode seriously needs just one character to to put everything into place, and that's of course Doctor Strange. They did say, you know, this this series will, will tie into Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness somehow. And Wanda will be <coughs> in the show, in the movie. So quite interesting to see how that's going to turn out. And if Doctor Strange will somehow make a cameo in this episode. I mean, in this in the, in the last uh, couple of episodes. Hopefully there'll be a, a cameo, hopefully not. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed it. It was such an amazing episode. It was completely different. Um, completely, completely, completely different. And it was cool to, it was just cool to witness like the MCU vibe, like within the comfort of my own, the comfort of my own home. And it was interesting. It was fun. It was different. It brought me back to the times of when, you know, I was in the movies, like watching the Marvel movies. So this episode again was literally straight out of an MCU movie. Like, um, I liked it. They gave us a quick origin story at the beginning of how, you know, Rambo came to be and what, what, what she went through. And then, pow, they brought it to the end. And it was quite, quite interesting to see. And it looks like Wanda, she is the, she is the culprit in this. Like, she is in charge of this whole situation. Or is she? It still doesn't make sense. It still doesn't make sense, or maybe all those times that she basically couldn't remember anything. She was actually playing the part and playing, playing dumb, playing like I don't remember, I don't know anything, but she does. Because I think sincere, I think it could be the the it could be that all she basically want wanted was to have the family that she never had, you know, have the vision with her have children that never happened because of course Ultron um not Ultron you know Thanos killed the vision which is quite interesting but here's something that I didn't really think about right if um it's real it's all real right that means Wanda's children are real that means also that if they're real and everybody else there is basically real. That means these kids will come out of that city and they'll be real. They'll be they'll be the they'll be the the daughters of uh, Wanda. And hopefully, if it goes as I want it to go, the vision will come back and he'll be alive. Or will he? Interesting, right? Anyway, that's my thoughts. Um, that's what I could remember and my thoughts basically on the show, on the episode. I totally loved it. It was amazing. It was action packed. It was it had it was it, it was just something straight out of an, an MCU movie. And that's one thing I like about now I've seen this. It just shows me that future, all of the future um, Marvel, Disney uh, TV shows are essentially going to be MCU. Marvel Studios quality. Like when I saw that Marvel intro at the beginning, I was like, yes, I'm getting a Marvel quality TV show, you know, which is amazing. But yeah, I loved it. Is there anything else that I'm. Uh, no, no. So this episode was dope. We had Easter eggs. Well, we had the connection with Rambo being, of course, Avengers, um, being, of course, Captain Marvel. We had, um, of course, the connection with um, the snap when Tony Stark brought everyone back to life. Of course, Avengers Endgame. Uh, we have Darcy from literally from Thor. We also have uh, who else? I forget someone else. I forgot the guy's name. The the detective. He was actually from Ant Man and the Wasp. Pow! 
forgot his name. What else? Um, we had the other connection. We had the other, of course, connection with the MCU when we ha we saw the Vision. The Vision was dead, right? And we saw him dead. And what was really crazy and nuts, right? What was cre really crazy and nuts is um, is that when this is something I forgot to say. When Wanda looked at the Vision, she like she startled. So I was like, hold on a second. If you are like I'm obviously I'm like I'm contradict contradicting myself, but if you were the one that created this whole scenario and you're in it and you know what's going on, then why would you be shocked if basically you saw him like that? Because my my thought was he's always been like that, but she sees him the way that she wants to see him. So is she really in control of the situation? Is she control is is she being controlled to act a certain way to to pass basically a certain agenda like is she isn't she because uh, darcy did basically say that, that 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 cosmic wave was growing and growing and growing so potentially what we're experiencing basic what they so what they're experiencing in the town that can manifest throughout the whole world so again is Wanda really in control of the situation or is it a higher force or purpose actually working through her? And that's something we're all going to see because I don't see how Wanda would become so evil or violent out of the blue because that's not in her nature. So why is she doing in regards to what she's doing? And we also understood that she was the one that was editing and editing time and replaying time back. So she is in control of that because she's done that before. Any time that Vision said something to her, and he said like something's not something's wrong, Wanda, she would just cut it off, rewind time, and then it would just basically just for someone called me, it would just go back literally to of course to the scene or the moment the moment that she wanted. So so far it's going to be insane. Looks like there's going to be a big war brewing, but a big war brewing. With that being said, people. That's my take literally on Wonder and Vision. Totally loved it. Can't wait. Cannot wait for the next episode. It was dope. It was fun. It was different. MCU quality. We saw the MCU connection straight there. And I hope we and I hope we see more of these MCU connections throughout the last couple of episodes. And I hope there's a season two. Somehow. Please. Give us a season two. There must be a season two somehow. Or maybe it's gonna be just a one-off season because the way it's going. It looks like it's going to be just a one-off season, but I guess I do want literally more. And I've seen all of this. I can't wait to see more more of, of the, the Disney shows like Loki, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Miss Marvel. That's one. Of, oh, man. I cannot wait for Miss Marvel. Anyways, what were your thoughts basically on that particular, or well, on today's new episode? Drop your comments down below. Let me know. Peace.